Hey, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgeway, a self-confessed uh, Tudor nut and someone that researches and writes about Tudor history every day of my life. Yes, uh, I'm very blessed. Okay, where am I taking you today? Well, I think I'm going to take you to quite early in King Henry VIII's reign. On this day in Tudor history, the 16th of August, 1513, in the reign of King Henry VIII, the Battle of Spurs took place at Gingat or on Gingat in France. Now, this was a battle, if you can call it a battle, between the English force backed by imperial troops and the French force. And it's called the Battle of Spurs because the French knights uh, who were taken by surprise and realising that they were outnumbered by the English and Imperial forces and outmaneuvered, decided that they weren't going to stay and fight. Uh, they were going to flee. And they fled on horseback and apparently their spurs glinted in the sunlight and that's why this uh, non-battle, because um, <coughs> it certainly wasn't a battle, uh, that's why it has been called the Battle of the Spurs because of these spurs catching the sunlight as the French fled and of course the English counted that as a victory. As historian JJ Scarisbrick points out, there was no pitched battle, only a hurtling gallop across the fields at Gingat. But the fact that six standards were left behind and a duke, marquis and the vice admiral of France were captured was enough to give the skirmish the aura of an heroic victory, the so-called Battle of the Spurs, and to allow Henry to describe it in grandiose terms. So not a pitched battle, no fight but uh, some important uh, people were captured so Henry could sort of dress it up as an English victory. And in a letter to Margaret of Savoy written on the 17th of August 1513, Henry VIII reported that the English horse, however, passed by Gingat and confronted the French, who were three times their number. Several encounters took place and men were wounded on both sides. After this, in the Empress Company, advanced straight against the French, causing the artillery to be fired at them, whereupon they immediately began to retire and were pursued for ten leagues without great loss to the English. Nine or ten standards were taken and many prisoners. So Henry, I think, was exaggerating slightly there. Henry went on to name in this letter some of the prominent prisoners uh, who included the Duke of Longueville and the Vice Admiral of France before commenting that the Emperor has been as kind to him as if he were his real father. Now, although Henry VIII uh, gave this account to Margaret as if he'd been present at the battle and sort of in the midst of it, well, non-battle, uh, Scarisbrick notes that the king actually missed it. Um, he was laying siege at the time to the nearby town of Terouan, a town which soon surrendered to the English and Imperial forces, along with the town of Tournai as well. But some sources have Henry as present, but behind the front line rather than in the middle of the action. He certainly wasn't at the front, uh, you know, doing anything major. So the Battle of the Spurs, uh, a bit of a non-battle, but something that Henry VIII dressed up as uh, yeah, an English victory, a sort of heroic, uh, yes, English victory. So a bit of exaggeration on this day in Tudor history. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live. And please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed this on this day in history. I'll be back tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye. What are you doing?